In this video then, we're going to look at direct and inverse proportion. So what are they? Well, let's start off with direct proportion. Direct proportion is when the uh, we fall into it falls into this equation y equals kx. In other words, y is equal to a certain number of x's. For instance, y equals 3x, y equals 10x, and so on. What that's telling us is as x increases, so does y at the same rate. So an example would be is if we had um, an equal number of uh, people with equal strength, equal technique and so on, dig in holes, every time you add another person, the speed at which the hole is dug will increase at the same rate. <clears throat> so if in this case, the example here says three times faster, we could say that the speed S is uh, 3P. So if there was one person, the speed would be three. If there was two people, the speed would be six and so on. So the speed is increasing in proportion to the number of people. Direct proportion, when it shows itself on a graph in a linear form, looks uh, like this. So as y increases, so does x. It can have any gradient, but the important point is that it passes through the zero, zero point. If we add one on or subtract one on, it's not going to be directly proportional. Inverse then is as x increases, y decreases. Now for this to happen, we have to have the x underneath instead, be dividing the opposite side by x. So we have a number over x. So for instance, y equals to 2 over x would be inversely proportional. So when digging a hole, every time there is an extra person, the length of time decreases. So we could represent that by t is equal to 1 over p. And here we can see in this example that as the p increases, so the time decreases. If the number of people was 2, time would be equal to a half, 1 divided by 2. If the number of people was 3, time is equal to 1 over 3, a third. So the more people you have, the less time it takes to dig the hole. Hence, they are inversely proportional. An inversely proportional graph then shows the slope going uh, downwards, a diagonal uh, downwards slope. <coughs> Other graphs that you should be able to recognise. Now, these ones, make sure you know the um, shape of the graph and which graph they represent. Um, but you don't have to be able to draw them yourself. Um, at least you'd be able to sketch them and you should be able to have a table and put, put the coordinates on and join them up. But you wouldn't be expected to work out where the dots should go, where the lines should go, as you would with a linear equation. So <clears throat> I've actually changed the x to a k here. So if it was y equals k squared or y equals x squared, it's directly proportional because the x squared is on the top and it would give us a curve like this, a u-shaped curve. So if you've got a u-shaped cur curve, um, then it's directly proportional and y is equal to k squared or x squared or whatever. Now, if we have y equals 1 over k squared, so when we've got that k squared or that x squared and it's inversely proportional, it gives us this shape instead. Starting very near the line, the x-axis, gradually increasing until suddenly it goes into a rapid increase in the last one unit, but never touching the axis here. So a gradual increase. In the last one, it goes into a rapid increase and then never quite touching the y-axis and then comes down the other side. If we had a cube shaped graph, so y equals k cubed or y equals x cubed, it would give us a shape like this. Notice how it's going through the zero point. Inversely, instead of that zigzag shape, it gives us this, very similar to the y, 1 over x squared or 1 over k squared. But whereas 1 over k squared gave us the line going up by here, both of them were positive in the y's. With the cubic, the first line is shown in the negative y and x, the 
third quadrant, whereas the first is shown in the first, uh, the other is shown in the first quadrant again. So this is an inversely proportional cubic graph. The last ones then are the roots. If you had a graph which is the root, so y is the root of k or y is the root of x, you can see here you've got this curve going upwards like this. Whereas if it was inversely proportional, it's coming down now. Notice how it never, again, never touches the zero because you'll never have one over the root of zero. The number doesn't exist. So those are the different graphs you be, need to be able to recognize the shape of um, and know those little things about, you know, the fact that it can't touch the axes and recognize whether it would be inversely proportional or directly proportional. One thing I should note as well is remember um, when you've got something such as uh, x times y equals 3 and you're asked well is this inversely proportional or directly proportional you need to have just the y on one side of the axis. So in that case if you had x y equals 3 you divide both sides by x to get the y on its own so y is equal to 3 over x, you know it's inversely proportional. So when the x was on the left side of the equation, it, were, it looked like it was directly proportional because it was on the top. But when you move them apart, when you put the y on one side and the x on the other, suddenly it becomes, you can see it's ah, inversely proportional.